Dolly has time. There you go. <laughs> Amen. Praise God, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the folks all over the world out there. And God doing great and mighty things. And so, God, we ask you to bless this class today. Yes. That the spirit of wisdom and revelation be upon us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, yes. we thank you, Lord. Have your way. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let me just share real quick before I call her up. I was at someone's home yesterday. I was praying for them. I had my arm, like my hand on the back of their shoulders, praying. And suddenly an angel came up next to me. I felt the heat of it. Wow. And then finally, it actually started leaning against me. I felt it physically lean against me like this as I was praying. A powerful move of God. I mean, just like, like heaven showed up. Amen. God is moving in a mighty way. So as Andre come up and give us an announcement, just take your time. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. Well, I'll sit down a minute. Good morning. Good morning. So I, we just want to make sure that you are all aware, even online, that we are going to be hosting a powerful event on June 1st, where it's really about if you're walking in any type of bondage, if you're dealing with any type of regret, any type of stress, any type of shame, any type of guilt, um, we just invite you to come because that's not the way that Jesus wants you to walk through this world. Um, if you've been <clears throat> dealing with any health issues and, you know, doctors say we've done all we could and there's nothing else we can do. This is the event you want to come to. So we just invite you to come um, to break chains and find healing on June 1st. If you want to come, this seating is limited because it's a small space. So you do have to register. Um, there is a registration link online. There's a registration link. If anybody in here needs it, we can get it to you. So just go to David Cordo's, um, your Facebook, right? And it's it's right at the top pin. So if you guys watching online need it, you can um, check that out and register now. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. This called uh, Into the Light. And uh, it's, uh, it's very powerful. And uh, I really recommend, uh, whether you've been through some of it or not, to go back through. We've asked Team Supernatural to be with us. We need you there with us. And then we have new team members that's never been through it yet. And you need to go through it. So we want everybody caught up, uh, be on the same page. And uh, I wish someone had taught me this when I came to God originally as an adult. Mm -hmm. Because I, I like to call it Life 101. Mm -hmm. uh, it's things about life, living uh, dealing with everyday things, whether it's on your job, in your school, in your family, um, that uh, I, I was never taught. And there, there's a, one of the lessons I've taught like seven times. And um, every time I teach it, I get something else out of it. Mm -hmm. I find something I need. Amen. We're lifelong students. So I recommend uh, it is free of charge. We're, we're Actually, I'm sponsored from River Life World Missions. Maybe you donate into it. And I'm, I'm sponsored. I'm paying for the room. I'm taking care of some gifts, uh, worship leaders coming in, et cetera. Uh, and we just want to bless you. Uh, we're doing it at the, at the um, uh, Holiday Inn Express right here at Lake Katrina across from Stewart's. And the reason we're doing it is because upstairs is not available because of practice on Saturdays. And uh, <clears throat> I had a couple of my team female team members tell me the cafe is too, too gringy as they said, amen. <laughs> and so that's why we're having it there, amen. amen. Because I'm sure they'd be glad for us to use that, but uh, we're having it there. There's some people come in out of state, a register um, right now with the Team Supernatural people, we're about half, about half capacity already. Of uh, 50 is uh, the seating in there. And so uh, come, enjoy it, nine, nine to four, uh, there'll be a, a break for lunch. We have a couple of little breaks in between, a break for lunch. You bring a bag lunch. If not, I think there may arrangements if you want to put in. Lois will take care of it, run down to Adam and get you a leaf to eat. I mean, a, a sandwich to eat. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Give anybody that scripture. His leaf shall not wither. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think some of our people are not healthy to eat too many leaves around here. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. They're not getting enough gluten. As I say glutton, I go to the store and say, look, glutton free. <laughs> Amen. So God is moving in a mighty way. I do have a, a powerful message today. I've spoken to a few of you individually. Uh, the other day, the Lord spoke a word to me so plain. I heard it. Please, you listen, hear my voice right now. It was probably not audible to anyone else, but to me, is that plain? <clears throat> and here's what the Lord said. Follow closely. And the title of this message, for those who like titles, is Mercy and Grace. 
Thank you. I have a short title today. And but God said this. My people confuse my mercy for my grace. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. I mean, I mind my own business. I don't I wouldn't even in prayer or anything. Just always said the Lord spoke to me. The David, my people confuse my mercy for grace. It stopped me in my tracks. I've shared a few you, you individually. It stopped me in my tracks. I thought, I never thought about that. <clears throat> but but think about it. How many people you know that are living in kind of, some kind of deep sin and because God has not zapped them? Mm -hmm. They think, God, me, it's okay. Uh, I, it's just grace of God. It's not the grace of God. It's God's mercy that, that you're not dead yet. Amen. Amen. Uh, as you know, I went through war, uh, many of near-death experiences. You that read my book, I restocked them upstairs. There's more available up there. And, and uh, I, I fully believe that the, the only reason that I did not get killed in combat in many other areas is because God in his foreknowledge knew that one day I say, yes, Lord. And at 30 years old, I come to God and serve him with all my heart. Mm -hmm. And it's just his mercy. But I was not saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. All that time that God did not let me get killed, I was not saved. Okay, a little bit, we'll read that roll call, hell sin, but one of them in there, see, many of those things I check, I wasn't this, I wasn't that, I wasn't that, I wasn't that, but one of them I was, I was a drunkard, mm -hmm. bound by alcohol, amen, and the Bible said, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, I didn't write it, don't, don't throw tomatoes and stones at me, I didn't write it, God did, yeah. <clears throat> okay, and so, let's talk about this a little bit, mercy and long suffering run together, some people, as I said, are coming to roll call, hell sins, because they do not see a swift judgment coming and they feel like it's okay. They call it grace, but I call it greasy grace. It's not real grace. You know, oh, we can just live anyway because we're under grace. No, you can't. Oh, you know that in the Old Testament, that when Jesus came, he fulfilled the law. He came to fulfill the law. We say last week on baptism uh, in, in Colossians 2 that, that it says that the uh, um, that ceremonial law was nailed to the cross. It was nailed. The ceremonial law was done away with. We don't have to go kill an animal and, and, and put it on the altar or a pigeon dove or whatever. But moral law rolled right into the New Testament. The Ten Commandments are still available. All those moral laws that God spoke about throughout the Bible, the village is many places, uh, is still, it's still in effect today. And so people think, well, we're under grace. We, we can live any way we want to. And that's not true. So let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and just see what this, this list of things that God said, you cannot go to heaven, then we'll get deeper into our main subject. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It's in the Bible. This is a Bible study. Bring a Bible. Not the encyclopedia of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? It's pretty plain, isn't it? Yeah. The next words, do not be deceived. How many people you know are deceived? Yeah. Well, we're shacking up. We're living in adultery, fornication, but we're, we're okay. They're deceived. Or they're drunkards. Or we're, we're, God loves us. Yes, he loves you. He loves everyone. He loves a sinner, but that does not mean we're saved. Amen. Don't confuse mercy for grace. <laughs> Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards. That was me. Mm. Nor revelers, nor extortioners, we inherit the kingdom of God. And here's the good news of verse 11. As such were some of you. Hallelujah. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so by the Spirit of our God, uh, we're sanctified. And so Paul says, such were some of you. In the Old Testament, you commit those sins. They take you outside the camp and stone you to death. I personally believe the reason of that, because there's something that never happened in the Old Testament. You never find demons cast out in the Old Testament. It was not until this one called Jesus Christ of Nazareth come walking by the shores of Galilee, the demons begin to scream out. Have you come to torment me before my time? They knew who he was. Amen. Amen. But the Old Testament work has, I, I believe, Cardinal 3 day, my opinion is that under the law of Moses, they stoned the dead because many of those demons 
are, are, are transferred by illicit sexual relationships. Amen. I've seen Holy Spirit, tongue talking, water baptized men commit adultery and demons like a, a demon of adultery, the shape of the man like a shadow, the shape of the whole man. When I cast that demon out, he came out and ran out the back of the church. And to this day, that man is free. That's been decades ago. He could not control himself. He had to ask, who is driving the car? Yep. Amen. Who's in control? And so uh, thank God uh, for his mercy that we have now that, that, that he did not, when you're in those sins, we just listen. He did not destroy you right then. He could have, but he didn't. He gave you mercy. But do not mistake mercy for grace. Mm. Yes. The grace of God, the unmerited favor of God, the divine enablement of God. I'm saved by grace, not by works. We'll read the scripture on that a little bit in case you want scripture. Make sure it's in the book. Amen. Okay. And that grace of God, I'm saved by the grace of God. And I did not get this, would not destroy it all those years because his mercy, his long suffering, he, he allowed me to live. He allowed to give me a day. I really believe that God knew that would, if he had known that would never came to him, I would never survive in war. I, I, this is my personal, it's Cordial 3 and 8. In my opinion, I say Cordial 3 and 8. <clears throat> okay, and so let's go to Leviticus 10. We'll find out about Aaron's two sons. They brought strange fire to the altar of God. Let me give you a little background. Uh, God stored the first fire there in the Old Testament <clears throat> under the law of Moses. And they had to keep the coals up. Every time they moved the wilderness, you know, the, you know, uh, the, the cloud by, uh, by day, the pillar of cloud by night, every time they moved, they had to bring the coals of the original fire. They could not let the fire go out. When they restarted, rekindled that fire again, when they stopped, it had to be from those original. God's fire. But their Aaron's two sons, their priests under him, brought strange fire to God. So let's read it. <clears throat> and Nadab and Bihu. I don't even use those names today. Leviticus 10 what? Oh, sorry. Verse 1. Thank you. Leviticus 10, verse 1. I get too excited. I know. <laughs> and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and put incense in it. He offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord, devoured them, and they died before the Lord. That word profane in the, in the, the old King James, amen, is strange. Strange fire. It's not God's fire. See, we're living in a world right now of religions and, and churches all over our nation are trying to offer strange fire to God. We just go through these motions and God's going to accept it. No, he won't. Amen. I, I recently was praying for someone, uh, some other area, and then someone else after I prayed, they began to pray. And I mean, they might as well have been reading out of a book, a uh, brother. They might have been reading out of a prayer book. You know, it's all, all good things they're saying, but there's no ump behind it. There's no anointing behind it. It was dead as it could be. I didn't think they were ever going to stop. I said, oh, my goodness. You know, uh, I just had a mighty manifestation of God, and there's someone, bu, 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 you know, oh my goodness. Come on, when you speak, there should be something of God behind you. The power of God. Amen. 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 The Apostle Paul in the New Testament said, I don't fight as a man uh, beating the air. You know, we can all get in front of a mirror and shadow box. We look good. Or shadow exercise, maybe. You know, <laughs> Amen. I exercise in the morning, getting that cu cup of coffee. <laughs> Amen. But we can all look good in front of the mirror, shadow boxing. You bounce around, man, we look good. But you get in the ring, that's another story. You get in the real fight. Praise God. Right. And, and so they offer strange fire. So let's bring God the real thing. Amen. Uh, when we speak the word in prayer, something should happen. Amen. Yeah. I sure want to go about the angel showing up. Yesterday, I mean, not only the heat manifest, but leaning against, I'm literally leaning against me like, you know, I didn't know if I ever wanted to move. I had someone else to pray for. And they followed me over there. Praise God. Amen. But we should, heaven should know us. Remember in the book of Acts, the sins, sons of Sceva, those people, they went, they tried to cast demons out in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And the demons jumped on them and they fled naked, the Bible said. And they said, 
Paul we know, Jesus we know, but who are you? We should be known in heaven and in the spirit, the dark spirit realm. We should be known. They should know us. Amen. We should walk in a room of darkness and it gets light. If it gets dark when you come in, there's something wrong. Amen. 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 <clears throat> okay, let's go to Numbers 14. A lot of scripture today. That's why it's a Bible study. Mark your encyclopedia, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Remember the old, the old days they come door to door selling encyclopedias to you? Mm -hmm. Told your parents your child never going to be intelligent if you don't buy this. They all bought it. They bought the updates. And now we go to Google. Any question I have, Google. Yeah. I asked Mr. Google. <laughs> yeah, that's not the word of God. The word of God is above Google. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers 14, verse 18. <clears throat> Numbers 14, verse 18. To follow all this closure, it's the word of God. The Lord is long suffering, abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he by no means clears the guilty. Stop there. Just because he's long suffering and has mercy does not mean he's clear the guilty. You realize in the Old Testament, I know we have some Jewish scholars in here, they had their atonement once a year. The high priest would go behind the veil to offer. Uh, the atonement for the sins of the people. There's only atonement. Th that was not the forgiveness of sin. That was not remission of sin. There's atonement. It rolled. You ever seen these, these little bugs on the ground rolling stuff across the ground? All it did was roll those sins for another year. Next year, all those old sins and all the new sins piled up, they rolled it. They rolled it. They rolled it. Until it crashed into a hill named Calvary. Amen. Amen. And the blood of Jesus forgave those sins. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so let's start reading again. Verse 14. I mean 18. Chapter 14. The Lord is long suffering, abundant mercy, forgiving the iniquity and transgression, but by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children of third and fourth generation. You don't know I teach a lot on that. Psalm 51, verse 1. And this is a psalm of David. Every once in a while, read the whole psalm. I do. As David's repented after he committed adultery with Bathsheba. He committed adultery with Bathsheba and had her husband killed. He told the head of the army, just, just put him on the front line, make sure he gets killed. You know, out front's a bad place to be. One time I, I was pulling point when I was just a PFC before I was a sergeant in Vietnam, cut through the jungle, and they had a dog handler behind me. Very soon we had dogs with it. We had a few good ones, but this one too good. He right behind me. I thought, man, I, I'm pretty safe today. I chopped right into an enemy base camp. Stay at the base camp. They fled before we got there. They heard us chopping through. We make a lot of noise. And there's hot rice still over the fire. They just left. And there's a tiger cage that been keep, keeping American prisoners of war. And they fled with them. We didn't know we were trying to find them. They didn't. We we're grunts. They didn't tell us anything except go that way. Chop, chop. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but but the, the thing is, God, God spared me there. And, and, and uh, there was that warning there. And, and God uh, let me live. But David committed sin, the sin with Bathsheba and uh, the, had the husband killed, put him on the front line. That's why I was talking about the point deal. That's easy to get killed on point. That's a bad place. You're the first one chopped through the booby trap. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and, and the thing is, had him killed. And so there's a horrible sin. And so David repented. Remember, Nathan, he's sitting around like nothing happened for a while. Man, everything great, God. Guys, oh, man, praise God. Hallelujah. And, you know, in, in Jehovah good. I mean, that type of thing. And suddenly Nathan, the prophet, walked in. He told a story. He said, man, there, there, there's a man that, that only had one of those sheep, but a man across the road had herds of it. He came to that one sheep he killed and took it away. And David jumps up and said, as the Lord that that man's going to die. And Nathan pointed bony finger at David. David said, thou art the man. And David, instead of puffing up, said, I'm going to kill that prophet, he went to his knees and repents. Amen. But because of that sin, even that child born him and Bathsheba died. And, you know, it said David was looking out and seeing her bathing. Maybe that's why she called Bathsheba. I don't know. I'm just joking. <coughs> Can't help myself. <laughs> Okay, verse 1, 50, Psalm 51, verse 1. I woke you up, right? 
And here, here's Porter Davis' prayer. Read the whole thing sometimes. It's so powerful. That, that's how to repent. You want to know, how do I repent? That's how. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming in again. Amen. Amen. The presence of God's in this room. Hallelujah. Verse 1, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Those are the two words, must, mercy, loving kindness. Over the multitude of your tender mercies, brought out my transgressions, washed me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleaned me from my sin. There's only one little part. Read the whole psalm later. But he knew he needed mercy because, see, David deserved to die. Under the law of Moses, they should have took him out and stoned to death. Mm -hmm. I could preach a whole message on that, but I don't want to confuse you today. Let's go to Psalm 118. My, my wife and I was just in there a couple of days ago reading. And the whole psalm almost reads like the first, this one verse we're going to read. Psalm 118, verse 29. Psalm 118, verse 29. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Read that psalm. Sentence after sentence after sentence. His mercy endures forever. He lists this. He lists that. God did this. God did this. His mercy endures forever. Thank God for his mercy. Yeah. Thank God for that, that verse 11 we read a while ago in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Amen. That such were some of you. But now you're washed. You're, you're all that roll call of, of hell sins. You're coming. All those things deserve for, for eternity lost in, in hell. I've been to hell with Luke 16 with my two warring angels. It's real. So the people say there's no heaven or no hell. It's real. I've been there. Okay. Got the t-shirt. No, I'm just kidding about t-shirts. <clears throat> but the thing is real. But God, God in mercy <clears throat> did not destroy us. When I deserved to go to hell as a drunkard, he let me live. Oh, yeah. But when booby trap did not go off, uh, Caleb would play with some of the toys in my office the other day. Friday. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, but the thing is, when I, I deserved, I, I should have been killed. But I lived. It wasn't because I was a... a Macho soldier, look at me who I am. Because God had mercy. I thought I was lucky. I was like, man, I'm so lucky, man. Look, mm -hmm. I wasn't lucky. God was protecting me. Amen. Angels were probably deflecting bullets and, and all this stuff and all the all the time. I've had bullets go by my head so close that I felt like my head was split for the report of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. That close. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and but God was probably deflected with angels. And God's mercy let me survive. If God knew one day, I'd say, yes, Lord. Or oh, dear Stan, as I've shared over and over, I repent it. Mm. But God is our weeping before God. Amen. <clears throat> okay, let's go to Romans 9. We are talking about grace and mercy, remember? Mm. Wait, water, let me give me some. A shower bottle today. I'm not over there. Give me a shower. <laughs> Why should just give me a big towel up here. No coaches always have a towel in the pulpit. I see why now. <laughs> okay. Me and wipe their hands on their pants and they go back up. <laughs> Rolling the night. Or, or they or they eat and they start hitting their sleeve, you know. <laughs> they clean their lips off on their sleeve, you know. Oh, I never liked that. <laughs> when, when we used to wear a tie, I had to wear suits and ties at church years ago. You could always look at my tie and find out what I was eating. You know what I ate. <laughs> but now you look at my sleeve and see. Okay, Romans chapter 9. Oh, I'm just waking up. Oh, I'm so proud. I'm going to move, I'm going to have to move this camera so I can see her better. <clears throat> Romans 9, verse 14 through 18. If all this close, what shall we say then? If there's, is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom ever I will have mercy. I will have compassion of whomever I will have compassion. So then not of him who will nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I raise you up and may show my power in you and that my name should be declared in all the earth. Therefore he has mercy on whom he wills and whom he wills he hardens. Amen. It's God's mercy. Praise God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. More scripture. Ephesians chapter 2. 
you let the presence of God work on you right now, okay? As we're going through this. There's a beautiful presence in here. There's a, a soft manifestation just in here. And, and just let him touch you as we go through the word of God. You know, word heals. Word sets free. Word blesses. Praise God. There's nothing impossible. Amen. Like the song says, I'll listen to it again the other day. Don't tell me my God can't do it. Amen. Amen. You come too late. People say, oh, the days of miracles are over. I've seen over 12,000. Too late. Oh, you can't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Too late. I had since I was seven. Too late. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Follow it very close. <clears throat> but God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love which he loved us, even when we're probably, even when we're dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you are saved. It was in mercy that allowed you to survive long enough for you to make the decision to come to Jesus. And by grace, you're saved. Yeah. You're not saved because of mercy. Mm -hmm. You're saved because you're still alive when you made the decision to come to Jesus. Right. You don't come to the Lord after death. Okay. People out there can light all the candles they want, but it's not going to do any good. Okay. As a tree falls, so shall it lie. It's very important. So by grace, you have saved in verse 6. And this is powerful. And raise us up together. He may sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now stop there a minute. I'm, we're going to read some more. <clears throat> but he made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He didn't say one day he's going to make you sit. No, no. Right now. In the nasty now. I'm sitting together with Christ Jesus. He's the head of the body. I'm part of the body. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm totally connected to the head. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're, we're in that presence. You have to realize what you have. There's too many in the church are spiritual orphans. They have no identity. They don't know who they are. I know who my Heavenly Father is. <clears throat> Verse 7. That, it, that in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And not of yourselves. You can't get good enough to get saved. Some people say, well, I'm going to have to get good so I get God. No, you got to get God to get good. Yeah. You have it backwards. Right. Well, I'm just going to work through this. Had somebody, I was at a church recently, they, they need to be ministered to in an extreme way. He walked out and said, oh, I know I have problems, but I, I'm working on it. God bless you, my brother. We need God to do it. Amen. Yeah. When I met the Lord at deer stand, I was set free from alcohol instantly. I couldn't do it. What step program you take? One step to Jesus. Amen. One step. Amen. Amen. You may have some programs out there that does a little good, but I don't believe everything they teach. And they'll teach you uh, once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic, you just don't drink. That's a lie. I just read to you in verse 11, 1 Corinthians 6. Such were some of you. I was, but I'm not anymore. Amen. Yeah. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I must, once was filled with hate and vengeance. Me as a junkie or a dog. And now I'm saved. I've been baptized in the love of God through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I once was lost, as the old song says, but now I'm saved. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, let's keep reading. See so you enjoying. <clears throat> Verse 8 again. I'm going to start again. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift to God. Amen. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast. Verse 10. I love it. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. which should prepare beforehand. And we should walk in them. Beforehand. Subject before time. He already had a good plan for you. Had a great plan. All you got to do is follow it. Amen. Amen. It's real. <laughs> Damn crazy, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I'm just picking them up. Amen. It's real. 
Let's go to Second Peter three. Second Peter chapter three, <clears throat> verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering to, toward us, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. And what God not slack toward his promise, as some count slackness, they think because God did not destroy them on the spot like Aaron's two sons, we're okay. We're just going to live like that. We'll go sit on a church pew every Sunday, punch in, punch out. You go shack up all week. Go be drunk all week. Go rob all the banks all week. No. He set you free. You open the prison door that you're in. God goes in there. Those chains you're in. That prison you're in from your past. If you could see my past. Because if you can see all the pain I went through in life, from childhood to adulthood, you'd be totally shocked that I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Some of you know little bits and pieces more than others, but there's only bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. But God, oh, yeah. rich in mercy, yeah. and by his grace, his unmerited favor, he saved me. He set me free. The mm -hmm. chains fell off. Amen. <clears throat> so again, let me share that word that God, I started at the very beginning where God shared with me just recently, I did last week, and I've shared a few of you personally. He said, my people confuse my mercy for my grace. Don't confuse the mercy of God. Well, I went and did this sin and that sin. I'm still alive. And I, I feel okay. Remember what we read in uh, in First Corinthians chapter six, uh, uh, verse nine and ten. Do not be deceived. Pure deceit. You may say, "Well, you're okay. You can do that. It's okay." God understands. Yes, He understands. You're, you're headed for devil's hell for eternity if you don't repent. Amen. But the good news that once you repent and come under the blood of Jesus, you have no past. No skeleton in your closet. Amen. He puts a period to your old life. Oh, yeah. Brand new day. Oh, yeah. You're brand new. A new creature in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Across that bloodline. I don't care what kind of family I had in the background. I don't care how many sins are committed. I don't care how many horrible things happened in all the genealogy behind me. My Heavenly Father has none of them. I'm connected to Christ Jesus. In fact, I'm sitting together with him right now in heavenly places. I'm with him. I'm totally connected with him. The thought of his precious blood flowing through my mind, my soul, my spirit. Amen. It's overwhelming. Yes. It brings you to your knees. Yes, it's real. This is real. We're not playing church. And I watch people... In many, many areas, God you know, traveled many areas, as you probably figured out by now. They're living in, in, in roll call hell sins. They're coming to the church, they're sitting in the pew, they're saying, oh, how I love Jesus. It's like they're the best, best Christian in the world. But they don't realize that there's some of us that walk in the spirit, that we're looking right through them. Amen. We're looking right through them. We see what's going on. And just because I act like I don't see anything, don't mean I don't see anything. I always say my wife says there's another sweet smile. She's looking right through you. She don't miss much. I was bouncing stuff off of her last night again. What what do you see here? What do you see there? You know, what do you pick up? Yeah. Amen. Because I was seeing things. Amen. But we had to have enough integrity to deal with it as God says to. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Let's stand. We want to go in prayer, but we really want to go deeper. You're very early. Don't worry about your bagel. You'll make it. Oh. We got our bagel nights. You have the Edomites and the Moabites and the bagel mites.
Amen. Lord Jesus, just touch him right now. Remember that woman in the Bible? If I could, she had an issue of blood. If I just touch him, the hem of his garment, I mean, may hope. At this time of prayer right now, just touch him. Forget about later. Forget about the next service. We'll have great baptism service. Forget about everything. Forget about what's out there. I forget about my cup of coffee. Amen. But just focus on Jesus right now. Amen. Right now, God can change your life forever. Amen. You, you can come to revelation that just because the things you did, you had mercy and he did not zap you. You still have to repent. You still have to turn about face like the military, about face, go the other way. You know, I once was living like this, but now I'm living like this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't minimize the presence of God here right now. We'll, we'll pray special later, but not for people, individual, not right now. Right now, just touch him. Let's all begin to pray fervently together. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise and worship you. God, above every name. God, it is you and not we ourselves. God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your long suffering, Lord God. All those years that if I died, I'd go to the devil's hell for eternity. But your mercy let me live, Lord God. It was you, not me, not my works. Oh, God, I couldn't get any good enough to do it. But, Lord, your grace, grace reached down for me. I was saved by the grace, the unmerited favor of God. I was set free by the blood of Jesus. Your holy blood set me free, Lord. And, Lord, you call me the holy calling. And, Lord Jesus, I release the faith of God upon these folks right now. God, those overseas, listen, those that are here by Zoom later on Facebook right now. God, the ones in Africa and Asia, Philippines, they're in there listening every week. Africa's listening, my, my brothers in, in Africa. Oh, God, I release that faith of God, the word of God, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus. I release it right now. I command chains to break. I command fetters to loose. I command body to be healed. Every sickness, every disease, every spirit of hurt, every spirit of death, I command out in the name of Jesus. And by your stripes they're healed. By your blood they're set free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And God, make every one of us a witness. God, you've called us to go out. God, into all the world, you've called us to go out. Go. What part of go do we not understand? We have to go out and, and speak the word. Uh, tell them I'm a Christian where I go to church and not save them. Tell them about the gospel of Jesus saves them. The preaching of the gospel saves them, Lord. <coughs> and my God, stir us up right now. Let's not fall into a routine. I do this every week. That's what I do. This is what I do. Here's a slot that goes in. Oh, God, let's break out of our box. Let's break out of the box, Lord God. Uh, some people build an air castle. They get their suitcase. They move in it. And they said, this is God according to me. But, Lord, uh, let's break out of that, Lord. Uh, let's break out of that routine, that box, Lord God. Uh, oh, God, to step out in faith, Lord God. Uh, I command fear to lead people right now. Every spirit of fear, I command out of them. Fear of witnessing. Fear of laying hands and healing the sick, Lord God. I command that fear to go right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit right now. You don't have it, just start praying in it right now. Anyway, he'll fill, it, fill your mouth. Oh, I stir up the gifts within me right now. I stir up those gifts right now. God, we see the river of the Spirit. We know. We see, Lord God. We see the human body, Lord God. God, we see the future, Lord, by the Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. 
Messiah, Lord. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. God, upon this rock you built your church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whatever I shall bind on earth is bound in it. Whatever I loose on earth is loose in it. I release you. The presence of God in here right now. God, the windows of heaven are open right now. God, your presence is here. God, your host is here right now. God, let people reach out and touch you. And to just reach out and touch you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy God. Holy God. Holy God that I serve. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Great I Am, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are my God in whom I trust. Some in trust in horses, some in chariots, the Bible said in the Old Testament. But I would trust in the name of my God. No matter what the weapons of modern warfare are, no matter how, how awesome they are, how strong, I trust in the name of my God. God, I pray for Israel right now. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem right now. God, I pray for the IDF soldiers right now in the combat. I pray for them right now in Jesus' name. God, protect your people, Israel, Lord. God, I read the back of the book, Lord God, uh, when those nations surround you, from Gog and Magog, uh, God, in the Valley of Armageddon, Lord God, you're coming back. You're coming back with armies of heaven, Lord God. Uh, you're coming back with a sword, the word of God. Uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, and God, your word said the blood will be the horse's bridles four feet deep in that valley. God, no matter what man thinks they're going to do, they look a little Israel and say they're going to destroy them. They're not going to. I read the back of the book. Hallelujah. They win. Thank you, they win. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray for Israel. I pray for the leadership there. I pray for the military leaders there. I pray for them. God, I pray for the people, even in Palestine, that they come to you, Lord God. That they come to you, Lord God, and see you, Lord. And quit hating America. Quit hating our God. Touch them right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, let there be a move of God among them. But God, let Israel not stop. Yes. Until his enemies is wiped out. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Jesus. God, in the natural, we would not let a hornet nest be hanging on our back door. We would not let it say, well, we're just going to live in here and not ever go out. No, we'd have to get rid of it. Yes. God, they cannot allow that to be there. Because they're going to try to destroy. All they want to do is eradicate Israel. And God, your word said that's your people. You gave them that land. Yes. You promised that land. Yes. And God, it's their land. God, they possess it right now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just keep praying. It's not over. Yes. Keep praying what God puts on your heart right now. Yes. You have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just begin to worship him. And just worship God out loud speaking. I love you, Lord. I magnify you. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this gift. It's free. It's free. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to beg for it. I thank you. I receive it. Amen. You need healing right now. Receive your healing right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, let your healing angels begin to move among us. Healing people as we stand right here. I thank you, Lord. Heal Shannon's neck right now. She told me about her. Not a word of knowledge. She told me. Heal it right now. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. God, every sickness, disease, of every spirit of death, every spirit of cancer, every spirit of death, spirit of cancer, I command out right now, every person in here right now, I command cancer, go. In Jesus' name. The name of Jesus above every name, <clears throat> above cancer, above every disease, every sickness, disease. The name of Jesus above every name. I invoke the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Father. God, touch him right now. Touch him. Just keep praying right now. We're not through. Some of you think it's time to leave. No. That's the problem. We worry about time. 
Amen. Even in our team tonight, I could feel you know we had a great move of God in prayer. I could feel there's a busyness in some people's spirit. Like it needs to be over now. I do this now. No, you don't do this now. We do him now. We do him now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's here. He's here. The Lord is here among us. Worship him. Magnify him. Thank him. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him. Oh, Lord, we thank you for sparing us. We thank you for your long suffering, your mercy, your loving kindness, your tender mercy. We thank you for it. We thank you for the blood you shed. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. God, let people feel the presence of God on this place right now. You mean some of your minds are somewhere else. You're 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 in Monday right now. Do what you're gonna do on Monday. When you come back for a while, come join us for a little while. Come back to class and join us. Come back to the Father. Come back to Him right now. He's got all kind of time. Come back to Him right now. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Lord Jesus, we need you. Yes, we Lord. love you. Yes, Lord. We magnify you. Thank you Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you what you went through for us. Yes. Lord, you did not deserve to go through that. You didn't deserve to die. We did. But while we were yet sinners, Christ, you died for us. Yes. Not because we we're great people and doing great things. But while we're yet sinners, you died for us. Yes, Thank you. God, let's come Thank to that revelation. You. Let's come to that revelation. Now take lightly your presence is here right now. And now you're with us. You're with us in this class right now. We thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name. Touching Jesus is all that matters. You don't know what next week holds. Touch Jesus now. To, the Bible said today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We focus on you, Lord. We focus on you. You have our attention. We turn our attention to you. Not everybody else, not everything else. We turn our attention to you. We look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to you, Lord. We look to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the God of glory. Thank you, Lord. Holy God. Holy God. Holy God. Mighty God. Holy Spirit, take your liberty. Take your liberty, Holy Spirit, in this place. Touch each one today. God, give them the desire for the things that God has never before. Let each one here seek first the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And those by, by Zoom later, oh God, and YouTube and Facebook yes. live right now, let, let them seek first you. Yes. Let them seek the kingdom of heaven first. Yes. You add everything else, but seek you first. Yes. Care about what you care about. Yes. Your value system. We have this mind of Christ, the Bible said. We should have his value system. We should be thinking about what he's thinking about right now. We should be, our focus should be on what is important to God right now. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Surely God is in this place. Yes. So do not despise the day. Yes. 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 Does I make myself known to each yes. of you in a way that only you yes. would know it's me. Yes. He said, I, I'm not a man that I would lie. I have made myself known. I have yes. revealed, it's my desire to reveal yes. myself to each and every one of you. 
so that your faith mm -hmm. not just rests yes. on what you've read, but on an experience, on an experience with the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord would have you know that he has spoken to you. He has revealed Jesus. himself to each and every one. Hallelujah. This is his will. Praise this is his God. will. That you would know him. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. There is Amen. resurrection power in this place. Yes, there is. And we give thanks yes. To the Lord for Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Surely God is in Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to yes. the mercy. Yes. Jesus. 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 Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Make up your mind today to be everything God ordained you to be. What called you to be. Don't try to be everyone else. Be what God called you to be. Deep down inside, you know what he called you to be. Yeah. What vision is he giving you? Yeah. What has he spoke to you in the quiet times? What have you seen? Press towards that mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. God, I, I've got things that God has shown me. I shared with people the other day that I'm going to press into that. I will be everything you said I'll be. I'll do everything you said I'll do, Lord. I'm your servant. Direct my path, order my steps. I go anywhere you send me. Yes, sir. I speak your word. Yes, sir. I go anywhere. <clears throat> I do anything. <clears throat> if we must be willing, if God should ask us to lay down her life for the gospel, to do so, if it's not worth dying for, it's not worth living for. My wife and I said, "The Lord, come speak to us right in Cambodia, or you want to die for these people." And you know, it not only take us a moment, yes, Lord. That don't mean we're going to die in Cambodia, but we had to be willing to. Because we, we were walking in danger. There's abductions, killings, everything going on. We had to be willing. If, if preaching there meant we had to die, so be it. Amen? Yes. So be it. It means we're being arrested and, and horribly treated. So be it. People say, well, we're Christians. Nothing bad going to happen. You better read your Bible. Paul and Silas, ask him someday in heaven, what happened in that jail? Amen. They're the first ones we see in the, in the New Testament and like Wall Street and stocks and bonds. Amen. Amen. That's what happened. That's Jesus. What happened to Jesus? What did they do to Jesus? Well, we're Christian. No happy clappies out there. Well, we're Christian. Nothing bad is going to happen because you're going on a mission trip and, and it's God's will. Nothing bad is going to happen. Uh, you better read the book. I have realization that yes, God protects me all the time. Thank God. But I always had the realization that He may allow me to walk through something I don't walk through. My wife and I was trip before last in, in Philippines. There's two earthquakes. All right, we're eleven floor of the hotel is going in a circle like this. And one time we're in a, in in Manila, Philippines, way up in the hotel. I forgot what floor and a tornado come through Manila. <clears throat> you know, strange things happen where we go. Amen. I mean, I just left Kaya and Dior one year, and over, I think, a thousand or three people died when a typhoon hit. The waters came down the mountain. And I've always been there with it. It's, it's like a bowl going into the bay, and they drowned. I have photos of, of women clutching their little babies. They're both dead. Amen. Amen. And, and we could have been there, but, but we left. They, they said up on a big billboard, there people, dead people hanging up there. That's how high the waters got. We just left. Amen. I just left Cambodia in 1997 and Khmer Rouge attacked. We go four, four, four trips. We're in a war zone. They're fighting Khmer Rouge. And Khmer Rouge attacking on pain with machine gun battles. The airport we checked out of, went through, checked out of, they blew it to pieces. There's a small airport then, much nicer now. Blew it to pieces. We just left. We could have been there. Yeah. But, God, but God had another plan. Yeah. See, God has more assignments. We can't let him get killed today. Praise God. And I thank God for all that. Yeah. But I realize something can happen. Amen. 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 But no matter what, no matter what. When, when, when heartache comes, hurt comes, get better. Don't get better. Amen. Forgive. Release yeah. people. Yeah. Amen. 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 
You won't need special prayer. We'll pray for you right now. If, Anybody else feel like this warmth? Yeah, it's, it's been in here since halfway through the lesson. Awesome. It's been here since halfway. In fact, I've been I've been actually seeing a, a light haze in here. I didn't say anything this week, but it came in halfway through the lesson. I said, you know, the Lord's here. Man, I felt. Amen. You see the ends of my fingertips turn red. It happens a lot of times when the anointing comes real strong. They start turning red like so I cut the circulation off there. Then later oil and silver will come my hands at times. Amen. Just a sign of wonder that the presence of God is here. In fact, why don't you stay right where you are? I felt that earlier. I think we'll do it. And, um, I'm not going to worry about camera. People in line just hear us pray. Don't even worry about moving. Let's just go back. We're going we're gonna to pray for people. Amen. Amen. You need prayer and uh, Amen. Um, and, and some of your teams are natural. Come on out and start, just start walking through here and start praying for people. Start praying. I'm not gonna pray for everyone. We don't. We don't care if the camera don't see us. And, amen. Let's get that neck totally healed there. <coughs> Where's that knot at? My shoulder. Lord Jesus, I command that knot to dissolve. That that muscle relax right now. In Jesus' name, every source, every symptom. She's had that before. God, every source is symptom, every weakness in there, we command heal. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I'm going to take her off her pain that she feels in her body. Any pain that she feels that is causing her any pain. <laughs> Let the blessing of God overtake the blessing. Lord, I put the kind of spirit in your hand, Lord God, and reach out to others, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Let it be a mighty blessing. Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I literally felt her shoulder move up like, when my hand was on that, but that's where it was. That's where the knot was. I felt it go and pop up. Her whole arm moved, and then it went popped out. God, it's so good. That was about great. Every block is every move right now. Every block is every hindrance right now. In the name of Jesus, right now, every move. I break every chain. Every move. You gotta see me something. No, I understand. <laughs> she was in a lot of pain. Like, 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 I was in a lot of pain. I
It's almost five, yeah. yeah. Get her that long. Yeah. 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 Our yeah. Yeah. Coming up on 26 years.